Hello, it's uh, Abhinav here and today's topic is your mutation in leg opera. Before going to discuss about that, we'll be thoroughly know about what the operant structure looks like exactly. So in this figure you can see here, uh, this is the promoter region which, for his, I mean, which is being regulated <coughs> by this promoter region and when the polymer is bound with that of the regulator it forms transcription and then translation to form the regulated protein. This regulated protein goes and binds to the operator region and that uh, inhibits this alkyl polymerase to move from the promoter region towards the structural gene to undergo the transcription which will be translated to protein molecules that will be utilized for your catalytic process or biochemical pathways. <coughs> So um, there are like negative and positive control and I think you must know but a little bit I is my responsibility to tell you about that. So if the, here is the one thing, the negative inducible operon. That means it will be induced in a in case of your there will be no uh, lactose, it will be induced and this repressor will go and uh, bound with that region and when there will be no lactose, so there will be no enzyme is required, so there will be no transcription to form this kind of proteins. And when uh, the your lactose, uh, this is what we call uh, L lactose, which is, which is produced when there is an uh, increased amount of um, concentration of your lactose. So this causes binding with that of this uh, uh, regulator protein, I mean the repressor, what we call and that uh, binding with that uh, inducer will be cause uh, uh, to say uh, i mean will don't allow to bind with their operator region and this task uh, the formation of this kind of transcription and translation and so here is the here is an uh, inducer uh, present and in no inducer present conditions for your inducible operon that means it is your uh, and the one more thing here is that what is your negative and what is the inducible operon? Inducible operon means we will induce us as a formation and the, the negative implies that it will be the opposite to that. So whenever uh, there will be a system with that of the inducer and then in that system there will be the formation of this required protein by means of transcription and translation. And the negative inducible operon is about in absence of your uh, this structure okay so this is uh, something like that negative repressal operon <coughs> the negative repressal operon here is the repressive operon and this is negative type that means in presence of a repressal like your precursor molecule uh, for example here is the product being acting as a repressor molecule so when it can bound with the inactive protein repressor then it will be bound with cause operator to be get blocked this RNA polymerase and thus the RNA polymer will be unable to move and there will be no transcription. So uh, in the negative repressive operon on uh, the product the product is uh, uh, is actually uh, your freight repressor and there will be repression in this operon system. So it is called repressive operon. But uh, whenever there will be no repressor it will be act like a negative operon. So it is called a negative repressible operon. So whenever there will be a uh, repress, I mean there will be regulatory uh, product you protein is there. So there will be always a repression of this protein formation. But in this case, it is your inducible operon because uh, whenever the inducer is present, then there will be always the formation of your protein. So it is your inducible operon system. And whenever it is not present, it will be called the negative inducible operon. So this is the basic difference of inducible and repressible. Then <coughs> this is the lack open of E. coli. Uh, here is the negative inducible, positive inducible. Uh, diagram here is shown in this conditions just overall. Nothing is important, but a little bit you should know I have told earlier. So this is some kind of enzyme deactivity. So I should actually say so we have to going to read in this uh, so here we're going to read three kinds of enzyme that is your permeage acetylase and beta galactosidase so what the permeage do it allows those lactose to move through the membrane and the second one is your beta galactosidase which breaks the galactose and glucose then your the third one is a beta galactosidase also converts this uh, 
by means of HDI license, uh, which will be required for your photo. Uh, the example like those related among them. So, what about this? this is the kind of reaction? So, here you can see this HDI license cause the glucose and gluc uh, galactose formations to form allolactose, which will be act as your inducer. Uh, and somewhere it will be product will be act as a repressor okay so this is the basic things is about it this is a very common structure of a typical lac operon and here it is in the absence of lactose molecule you can see it goes and bound with the operator region blocking this RNA polymerase to being undergoes a transcription but when present it will be this like this, 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 this so this is this but we are here to talk about the lake mutation the most important not the <laughs> operon system so the first thing that you know about the law before going to read about the lake mutation is the basic things uh, that i have already taught now the parcel deployed because we are here reading about the e coli cell that means we are going to deal with the two kind of sub two kind of chromosome i mean not chromosome two kind of dna uh, your DNA that means uh, your first one is your the normal strain of DNA that means uh, the full bacterial chromosome that we're talking about and second one is your like extra chromosomal DNA what we call the plasmid and that is important because in E. coli there's two sets of DNA the one is your the first one is your the full bacterial chromosome and the second one is your uh, the plasmid yes the small circle of piece of DNA because that also possess the information so whenever we have to deal with some kind of things like that so we have to consider the both the types of enzyme i mean both the kind of chromosome or what we call the piece of dna because they because both of them uh, possess the gene so now here in this picture you can see uh on this picture this is a, a written written here that the parcel deployed with the leg Z plus and leg Y plus here the leg Z means plus means uh, the plus symbol implies that means it is in good condition gene I mean it is not not mutated gene but in the negative sign which told and um, which says that it is a mutated gene so the functional the functional will be not uh, natural natural sorry so as we have discussed the parcel deployed the parcel deployed means uh, the two genes i mean two same i mean the same genes uh, are present in two regions that means in the uh, fully formed problem and also in the plasmids so anyone if get mutated the other one will be compensate its uh, absence so this is important okay yes very, very important because we are going to deal about these things so and how to write all this formula uh, this is simply written here you can see that the parcel deployed is written by the separating the genes on each DNA molecule with the slash, that means your lac Z plus lac Y minus slash. You can see here the slash lac Z plus lac Y uh, plus and the lac Z minus and your lac Y plus. This slash is so here. We also see in coming slide. Uh, this is how it's been written here, not written here, but somewhere. I'll show you how it's written. Okay yes this is here you can see here how it's written uh, lac i plus lac o plus uh, i mean not uh, lac c z minus that means it is a mutator one the lac i plus lac o c i mean it's, these are all kinds of things okay uh, now coming to this uh, what we call another thing is you can see here is suppressor the lac this means s means suppressor and uh, the c means complementary uh, may not be I don't know where it's exactly written somewhere but uh, the leg cement is complementary okay that means it helps to form I mean undergo the translation process I'm sorry transcription process by preventing this kind of uh, your blocking region of this uh, repressor okay so whatever may be so we're going to discuss about this uh, <coughs> mutation of leg operon so we know what is the partial deployed yes it's important partial deployed then we have some basic idea about the like promoter like gene and something like that all these things we have discussed now the structural gene mutation and the regular gene mutation this is the two, impo two important system in your leg open mutation this is the structural gene mutation and the one is your regulatory gene mutation so in the first one we're going to deal about the absence of lactose 
in the absence of lactose uh, we have here seen the two conditions that means the uh, we are think I mean it's, it's, it's consumed I mean it is taken that the first one that means this one is your bacterial chromosome where this is the lower one is supposed to be the plasmid chrome I and mean, the plasmid DNA piece so the gene which present in these two region of this E. coli bacteria will be shown here as a lex I plus and a mutated lex I plus. So the mutated one will be unable to go and bind there to repress this transcription. So the only one is your active repressor and that will be enough and will compensate the absence of that plasmid gene for the repressor. So here the basic uh, thing is that there will be completely inhibitional transcription with the very functional way, functional way. Okay, but when the lactose is present, that means our inducer, I mean sorry, I mean our repressor, the functional repressor actually, and the mutated one will be never used. So the functional from the bacterial chromosome will be bound with the, the lactose molecule and it's get inactivated. And after getting inactivated, it will enable to bind this like O region, so the transcription will be carried out. But here, the the bacterial chromosome. I am talking about the bacterial chromosome and the plasmid. So try to understand. Here is two types of chromosome. I mean the G G uh, DNA piece which contain the two different kind of genes, which is maybe either mutator or maybe in the condition. And all this being derived by means of experimental process by, by Jacob and Monad, I think so. So whatever may be. Here in this first case, it means the bacterial chromosome, the lac Z is being mutated, so it's written as lac Z minus. So there will be a non-functional beta galactoside formation. But in this lower case, that means in the plasmid uh, gene and um, plasmid DNA segment, this lac Z is a functional one and it can form beta galactosidase and it will be fully functional and can, could we support the compensate the absence of that bacterial chromosome for that enzyme and then coming to this uh, region uh, the next one here it is your um, the s here the s means your super suppressor that means uh, you can see here the basic difference in this region is the super suppressor that it possess the active site to bind with that of the sequence of your dna but it lacked the site, allosteric site for that lactose binding. So whenever there will be lactose, even in very high concentration, it will not be able to bind with that of the lactose molecules. And that's why what happened, the active repressor will produce a normal kind of uh, repressor molecule, but uh, in presence of this lactose or, or allolactose, it will be inactivated. But uh, what about the super repressor? It will not be get inactivated because there will be no site to bind with the lactose molecule. So the lactose uh, uh, operator will be get tagged with, I mean get blocked with the RNA polymerase and there will be no transcription occurs. And uh, so even though the normal, we have the normal lac Z plus lac Z or whatever maybe etc. But still we get no transcription because the mutation of this super repressor mutation of leg I. Then coming to what next here is another slide you can see here it is the partial diploid and formula is your leg I plus leg O plus leg Z minus in your bacterial chromosome and in, in plasmid chromosome this is your leg I plus leg O C. The C means it's complementary that means it really helps to transcription I mean allow the transcription Unregulatory. That means it will be keep on, keep on keeping this act, this chromosome segment on in on condition. That means there will be continuous transcription occurs, even though there will be a lot of inducer will be present in there. So in this case, we can see here the absence of lactose. What exactly happens in the absence of lactose? Uh, the lac I plus the lac I plus both the conditions that mean in bacterial chromosome and in your plasmid are in good condition that means they are not mutated and they are be fully functional active repressor will be formed which can, can prevent this RNA polymerase to go on but 
we have default here that means in the bacterial chromosome we don't have I mean we don't have normal uh, the rather we have a mutator like Z minus that means in both the case uh, if I mean when there will be the presence of and that means in the presence of lactose we will get a non-functional beta galactosidase enzyme but uh, the other one will be produced beta, beta galactosidase which will be functional and can be compensate the absence of that other one so in another condition you can see here the absence of lactose and this is uh, another sequence that means lag i plus lag o plus lag z plus and lag o c lag z minus okay so in this sequence the bacterial chromosome is normal but the plasmic chromosome of that bacteria e coli uh, has two mutated that is one is your lag o c the complementary uh, the mutated one Another one is like Z minus. It is also a mutator one. So let's let's see what exactly the result coming. Well, in absence of the lactose molecule, what we have got that the both the producers the active depressor because both are in good natural conditions. Then coming to this uh, mutated, I mean sorry, coming to this repressor, yes, it allows to bind with that the, both the region. But there is a problem because we have the lack OC that means complementary. That means it don't have. I mean, it, it is a little bit mutated DNA segment. We don't allow this repressor to bound with its width on its surface. So there will be no binding of the repressor. So the RNA polymerase will be simply keep on moving from the promoter region towards the structural gene and keep on producing the what the transcription and the product the enzyme related to that gene but here as we have the leg z minus that means we have the mutated leg z minus so we will have a non-functional beta galactosidase so in this case in the absence of your lactose we're gonna have a defective beta galactosidase but in the presence of that lactose we're gonna have a good condition of beta galactosidase that means our bacteria are going to survive that problem in this condition also so this is uh, very important uh, now you have better idea a uh, good idea about so you can also solve this type of question if you really want to solve and it's very easy you know now for you because you have a little bit understanding about how this gene are controlled are being helpful because they have two sets of uh, chromosome now coming another important thing is your cyclic AMP molecule the cyclic AMP molecules are also being very important because if they are also getting mutated then they will be won't be able to bind with the cap molecule here the two important thing is your cap molecule and the cyclic AMP molecule because both of them are together make the complex which will be activate this uh, region to allow this RNA polymerase to with an efficiency to bind with that region of the promoter so if there are any kind of misunderstanding or mis uh, misbehaving a uh, mutation in this cyclic AMP or cap molecule then there will be a decrease in efficiency but there will be production of beta glucosidase but in less amount yes there will be production of those beta glucosidase formulas and transesterase but comparatively less amount as uh, we don't have the cyclic AMP cap molecules being complex, being activated properly, I mean, fully efficiency is not achieved. So, in case of cyclic AMP cap molecule, if there will be any kind of mutation, then there will be low amount of uh, production of this kind of substance offers. So, in this diagram, it is actually shown here, not about the mutation, but it is a little bit about the function. So, I have to see, I have to also say about the function here. Now you can see here is that when the glucose is low, the glucose is low means we have to produce. I mean we have to consume the lactose to produce the glucose. So in that case we have to use multiple. I mean a huge amount of cyclic AMP and cap molecule to form the complex and activate the transcription. But uh, in opposite case you can see here when the glucose is in high concentration, there will be a level of cyclic AMP becomes slow and there will be less efficiency to bind with that of the region to promote the RNA polymerase to bind with the promoter region to further transcribe those genes <clears throat> so this is all about the lake operon and next slides will maybe on the topic tryptophan operon thank you very much